This video was brought to you by Noble Knight Games. More about them at the end of the video. Hey everybody, Kimberly here, and I'm really excited to share with you my take on Let's Go to Japan. This is a game recently put out by AEG and designed by Josh Wood, and I have to say there were several features or mechanisms that really caught my eye. The first, one to four players. Next, under an hour to play, and then lastly, simultaneous play. Plus, there's some really nice planning or programming in this game that will play out in that final round of going on your trip. So here's how the game works. Players are gonna have their personal board that has their days Monday all the way to Saturday. They also have this kind of happiness irritation meter they have some bonuses that are pictured right here in the front so you can see. Then there's a space for cards because in this game what you're going to do is you're going to draw cards from either the Tokyo or the Kyoto decks. And these are the decks. They're massive. Uh, and you're going to do what it says. So there are 13 rounds in the game. And they are spaced out like such because in the first four rounds you draw a Tokyo and a Kyoto card. And you play one into your player area and then you pass the next card to the right or to the left. So it's going to tell you which direction because later on you're gonna switch the direction of passing cards. But that's all you do. You simply just play one, pass one. Then in the middle round, you're going to play two cards and pass two, but it's gonna tell you where to draw from and you're gonna start seeing a stack of cards, which is the cards that people have been putting in your stack. So when you pass cards in this game, you're not just discarding them, you're potentially giving them to other players to use. And so when you decide what to play or pass, you're also deciding what am I giving my opponents because this is a competitive game. Then in the third section, it's going to be play one, pass one, and you're going to see uh, a variety of drawing cards uh, from your stacks and then drawing cards from the deck. So 13 rounds, and then you're going to go on your trip. Now here's what happens. Let's say you draw top cards. You say, here's my Kyoto, here's my Tokyo card. On the back, they look the same because they're all walk cards. Go for a walk. You could play your card as a go for a walk if you don't like what's on the other side. But you're going to look at the other side of the card and you're going to look at a variety of things. In that top left corner, you're going to see the experience and the mood track if there are those particular icons listed. And your experience is the little discs. You're going to see five different colors. There's a light blue, a pink, a yellow, a red, and then a black. And those are going to be moving you up on your tracks here on your calendar at the end of the game, but they also count towards your progress of matching the day. So if your Wednesday wants pink, you look at your cards and you're like, well, there's a pink icon here and then there's a pink icon on this card that gives me a choice. I should play one of these on Wednesday so that it matches that particular uh, experience image because then I'll get closer to gaining a bonus when I've placed my third card in that day. So you can only have three cards in each of these days unless you get a super cool bonus that lets you go for a walk and you can add a fourth card. But other than that, it's just three cards per day. And so when you finish that row, when you, or sorry, that column, you finish that day with your third card, you're going to immediately determine, do I get a bonus because I matched one symbol? Do I have two matching symbols? Or do I have three? And if you get to that third one, that's where you get to do the super cool juiced walk, placing a walk card in that uh, column to make it even bigger, or you can get a luxury train. And luxury trains are important, I'll talk about, towards the end because that's how you go from Kyoto to T Tokyo and back. And so it, it's your means of transportation. So you're looking at the top. What about, it? what's up there? Does it give me positive movement uh, for my mood? Does it give me maybe negative movement? Does it give me, and now here's your second thing you're looking at, victory points. Victory points are in the top right corner. And you're going to see, uh, in this case, I've got a three and I've got a card worth four victory points. That's just going to be straight up points at the end of the game. 
In the middle, you're going to see an image and it's going to tell you what your location is and give you some information. Now, I'll have to say on your first play, you're probably not paying too much attention to the center part. Maybe on multiple plays, I found myself doing this, caring more about the locations and the places than looking at the cards the very first time through because really to play the game and be successful in the game, you care about the icons in the corners and you care about that bonus at the bottom, which is called a highlight of the day. And you only care about the highlight of the day if it's your last card in that day. If it's the top card on your splay, meaning it's your third card, or it might be flipped over from a walk that you add on to that last space. But all you do is you look at that and you say, have I met this on that day or any previous day? And you're going to get the bonus on the side. So you only care about that highlight again if it's that last topmost card in the day. So you pick a card, you play it down, and then you take that card and you pass it and put it in your opponent um, card spot right here. So let's say this is the card that I got from my opponent passing it to me. That's play a card, pass a card. Round one is done, that's it. And then you just do the same thing again. Oh, we need a, a Tokyo and a Kyoto card. You draw the top cards, you look here. I got really fortunate to get yet another Tokyo card, which is the same city, and I got another per, uh, pink icon. So if I play this on top of that area, now I'm saying I want to hopefully score up more of that particular uh, color, I can get a bigger bonus once I get my third card in here. And I'm also staying in the same city because if you change cities, every time you change from Kyoto to Tokyo or back, you have to use a train. And there are luxury cars that give you victory points and then there are just the regular old train car that take away points. And those are, autom you could just get those at the end of the game and they're automatic and they're not that great. Now I will say the really cool thing about playing cards is you don't actually have to have placed them in the order you want sequentially, meaning if I played down my Imperial Palace Gardens, which I did first on Wednesday, the next thing I can play Uno Park, I'm passing this card, let's put it in the pass zone of my other player's uh, pass zone, I can take this and put it underneath. I don't have to place it on top because it came after. You can always choose to place a card in between two cards, on top of cards, underneath, or in a new day entirely, as long as you haven't exceeded those three cards per day. And I think that kind of flexibility is just dynamite. It's just, it, it's what makes it work because you cannot plan for a perfect trip if, if you don't have a little bit of flexibility with your card placement. Now there is another kind of a card called a neutral card and it's got this kind of yellow background. It's not Kyoto, it's not Tokyo necessarily. It's going to be just a place that could happen in either city and that means you can make it whatever city you want it to be for your trains and your transitions from one city to the next. And that's cool, again, really cool that there's that uh, opportunity for some you know, neutrality in switching from city to city or making it whatever city you want it to be. So let's say we have gotten our third card down. So let's say I've got this guy and I end up going to the Kotokuji Temple and I want to put it on top. So, or maybe I want to put, I'm going to pass this card to the next player. I'm going to sneak this card into the center and I'm going to score this up. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the amount of those icons that match your day. And in this case, I've got two. I've got two that match. I'm going to come over to my day bonuses section right here. I'm going to look at two and I can gather either two research tokens or one wild token. Now, these are really cool. If I want to, I can pick the number one. Um, it doesn't mean I have to pick something just in two. So if I, if I have two, I can do two or one. If I've got three that match, I can pick something in three or in two or in one. But the great thing about research uh, tokens is that you will be able to draw more cards from your deck before you play. 
and it gives you just a little bit of flexibility. If you're really looking for a particular symbol, you discard a research token and it allows you to draw cards, but then you have to discard those cards back into the center pile before you play for your play action. So it's nice and flexible. And the other thing is you can take a wild token and at the end of the game, it allows you to move your marker up by one space more of any kind, any type. You just move one of your markers up past, hopefully, a threshold uh, that scores you from either 4 to 8, 8 to 12, or even 12 to 15. So that's what number two does. Number one um, says here you get to essentially move your mood tracker one space to the right. And your mood tracker is really important because it's going to keep track of victory points that you could possibly earn if you have a really fantastic uh, trip or experience. Because once your marker moves all the way to one side or the other of these faces, you will then move that marker up by one and then take it back down to the center. Now if it goes over here in this direction, you do the same thing here, and it's going to be minus three points, eight points, and 15 points for the negative side, and on the positive side, you could earn five, 12, or 20. And this tracker is just around that as long as it doesn't hit the end, it kind of fluctuates inside of itself, but once it hits the end, it's gonna come back to the mark and then keep moving um, that particular point's distance. So. It's a really, really interesting way to get more points is to have a really great time and you kind of want to avoid the really negative bad time. But that number one allows you to move your mood up a little bit closer towards the green. Now the really cool one is if you have three that match and that gives you uh, a luxury train. And again, those luxury trains, you are just putting them in between a transition from Kyoto to Tokyo and then Tokyo to Kyoto at the end of the entire game. But they are worth two positive points as opposed to the regular train cars that are minus two that everybody gets um, if you don't have luxury trains. And then the other one is a walk. You will simply take a card, not look at it, and it gets, it's any card you want, Tokyo or Kyoto, and you will place it on top of that space that you just scored three matching symbols for. And you can play it on the very top, or you can just tuck it inside, and it's going to be worth one point, and it's going to give you uh, one positive movement in green for going on a walk. It's really nice, it's really beautiful, but if you place it on top, you can flip it over at the end of the game and you can essentially gain what's on the other side if you don't wanna gain what the walk side is. So you not only gain what's up here, but you also might gain your uh, bonus down here at the bottom for your highlights if it's the bottommost card. So going on an extra walk is really cool. If you do go on a normal walk, you also get to gain a research token, and that's another great way to gain those tokens because you're really looking for specific cards and you're, and you're not finding them, but that gives you a chance to find them. This game runs simultaneous play. Every time you play all the 13 rounds in the first part of the game, players are just doing their thing, playing their card, and if they get their third, they just gain their bonus, and that's it. You're not moving anything, you're not marking anything, you're not doing any mood tracks just yet. It's only when the entire game is finished and you've gotten to the end of 13 rounds do you then go through and evaluate each day to find out what was your highlight bonus, how many um, things do you move for each of your experience tracks, and do you have any victory points that you earned. So that's gonna be calculated at the end of the game when you go on your trip. Now the cool thing too is that there is something called passports. And uh, passports are an advanced play, play after you've actually played the game the first time so you get a, a handle or a grasp of the game concepts. But this is gonna give every player two passport cards and you're going to pick one that's going to be your passport for the game that gives you kind of a really unique way of approaching the game. Um, this gives you bonus points for victory points, maybe opportunities, two of your highlights of the day bonuses without filling the requirements, score double for certain things, start the game with three luxury trains. I mean, just really, really cool. So there are a handful of these passport cards here that will help you have a lovely uh, multiple times experience playing this game. And I'll tell you too, when you go through this and you play, you just don't get to everything. You don't get to all the cards. And I really found myself just chomping at the bit to get back into this. The simultaneous play is delightful. The passing of the cards has a nice kind of friction of you knowing what you're passing your opponent 
and excited to see what they're passing to you as well. So you have to be really careful about that. But then just the personal planning of matching your days with the experience needed to get the bonuses, but also just wanting to gain victory points and to gain those highlight of the day bonuses. Loads of fun. I found myself having so much fun playing this game, and I think that's good. (laughs) Like, I really do want to have fun when I play a game, and it, it seems like perhaps this might not be the game to have the most fun because it seems like most people are kind of just in their heads and looking down and you're playing at the same time. And at the end, you simply say, well, here's my journey, here's my trip, here's where I went. And you have to use this, you know, massive score chart to tally up every day and all of your mood and all of your experience and all of your luxury trains and um, any research tokens remaining. But it's fun. Like I had a load of fun with this. It's kind of like a personal puzzle. And it's just delightful. So everybody gets their own day player board and all their bits, and it's good. There's just enough here to give you a lot of delicious joys when you're trying to figure out, do I stay in Kyoto another day longer? Do I move over and do a lot of Tokyo? You're planning out your whole week in this kind of haphazard way of, well, I got this one on Monday and I've got a couple on Friday and I have this event I want to do on Wednesday. And then if my Tuesday is all filled up, Tuesday, no more Tuesdays. <laughs> Can't do anything else on Tuesday. And so you're kind of just figuring out when you want to do what. Um, one turn at a time, 13 turns is essentially what you're doing. And that's how you're filling up your day. Can't get enough of this. Can't get enough of this. And I have to say, I was really looking forward to it and he did not disappoint. So If you can get your hands on Let's Go to Japan, I highly recommend it. All right, everybody, that's it for me this time. I will see you later. Bye. Here at Noble Knight Games, we've been carefully growing the world's largest selection of board games, role-playing games and dice, war games, miniatures and paints, card games, and more. Going on 25 years now. Our rustic castle contains more game and hobby goodness than you can shake a stick at complete with careful packaging and the finest customer service the land can provide. You can buy, sell, trade from anywhere in the world, just like nature intended. Noble Night Games. So when you fill up a particular location, let's say I get my last one down. Boy, I can't seem to find a a pink now that I'm looking for one. And no, and no. Boy, that was so hard. Oh no, I can't find it. Let's see here. Um, I am still drawing. Can you believe it? Let me try again. Oh my goodness. Nope. Gosh, I thought I was going to be able to find a pink one, no problem. I had found a couple pink ones.